Hello, everyone. Welcome to the second day of the labs of the Kiskit Global Summer School. So, so far, you've learned how to work with single qubit and multiple qubit quantum states. And in the lectures for your second day, you discussed Grover's algorithm and particularly talked about how it works. In your lab, you'll build Grover's algorithm in Kiskit. So this discussion is going to show you a little bit about the kinds of problems that are involved in the lab and how you can tackle those problems. So let's switch over to my screen here. On my screen here, you can see how I have a list that I'm trying to show you with 13 items. Grover's algorithm from your lectures, you might remember, shows you how to solve the problem of unstructured search using your quantum computer. Now, if I gave you this list and I told you using a classical computer to find the marked item, in this case, that's the item with the red color on the end, it would take you at least in the worst case as many items as there are in the list. So you would have to go through each item. And let's say if you started from the left, you would need to look at all 13 items in the list in order to get to the number that's marked. And then eventually to say, I have found the number. On a quantum computer, the promise of Grover's algorithm is that you can find the marked elements in a list in square root of the number of items uh, in the list. So how does this work? You might remember again from your lectures that the structure of Grover's algorithm looks like this. So this pictorial depiction shows you how Grover's algorithm looks like the following block diagram with a Hadamard gate that takes all your qubits from the zero state uh, to a superposition state, and then a series of operations. So the operations you learned in the lecture are the oracle operator, which, which we have in that first box, and a diffusion operator, which is simply a reflection operator sandwiched between two Hadamard gates. And the idea of Grover's algorithm is that you can do this roughly square root of the number of items in the list times, and you should be able to get the result with, pro with high probability once you do your measurement, pointing to the marked items in your list. So let's go through these in some detail. You might remember that the job of the oracle is to take you through, uh, is to show you exactly which elements in the list are marked. And the way to implement that oracle, as you might remember from lecture, is to actually take a matrix that looks exactly like the identity matrix, but has minus ones at the indices where elements are marked. So, for example, you might see here uh, the index that is corresponding to um, uh, this particular point is marked. So I have a minus one here. The matrix starts off with size 2 to the n by 2 to the n because your circuit has n qubits. And at the end, what this matrix does is mark the state that corresponds to this particular index. So this is the, the first index within the matrix. So the oracle, as you've seen here, starts out looking like an identity matrix, and then you'd mark with minus ones the elements in the diagonal that correspond to the ones you'd, you'd like to mark in a list. Okay, so that's how the oracle looks. Uh, the diffusion operator is also very similar. So it's two Hadamards, a uh, series of Hadamards on all your qubits, sandwiching one particular kind of operator. Again, this matrix looks exactly like the identity, so very similar to the oracle, except this time the marked element is always the very first element. And you might remember from your lecture, this is how we implement the reflection operator. And the reflection operator sandwiched between these two creates what we call the diffusion. Okay, so now that you've seen how the two, uh, the two pieces work, the question becomes, how do you implement this in Qiskit? So let's switch off our screen. Uh, as always, your lab is going to be delivered as a zip file. Um, this zip file is going to be uh, the, the exercise that you're going to work with. So as always, you'd start by extracting that zip file. Looking in the folder, there should be an exercise called exercise one within that zip file. I'm going to use Jupyter Notebook as I did yesterday to show you what's in this uh, notebook. And if I do that, This is what the notebook looks like when I open it. So the structure is exactly like I showed you in the slides before, where you have Grover's algorithm, and you're going to build the, the pieces of Grover's algorithm that make it work. So here's the phase oracle, for example, where you're going to build uh, the, the, the code for the circuit, that the matrix that makes the phase oracle work. 
And then here's the diffusion operator where you're going to write out the code that builds out that matrix. Eventually, uh, we help you put it all together. So the Grover algorithm uh, has several pieces. You're going to first create a quantum circuit with n qubits. You're going to determine the number of rounds of Grover's algorithm. So you might remember from your lecture that the number of rounds is determined according to this expression that we've listed up here for you. And then you're going to apply Hadamard on all qubits and then do the repeated uh, application of the phase oracle and the diffusion uh, and the diffusion operator. So these, these operations, uh, you do them uh, R times, and R is the number of rounds that are determined by this, uh, this expression here. And in the end, you, you do a measurement of, this, uh, of all the qubits and see what states are measured. Now, we, we are looking for the particular instance of Grover's algorithm where we're looking for two marked states. And those two marked states have length six. So this is a six qubit Grover algorithm. And the indices of these marked states we tell you are one and 42. So the answers are one and 42. Now you take these marked states uh, and you use them to create effectively a Grover algorithm circuit that takes six qubits and has the marked indices that are one and 42. So you don't need to change any part of this particular cell. However, you do need to fill out these components, the diffuser and the phase oracle. And once you're done, as always, we've created a section for you where you can submit your work. Uh, this time, before you submit your work, we've also created a cell for you where you can see exactly what happens when you execute the quantum circuit and how the results look in terms of visualizing them on a histogram. So I hope you have, uh, you have some useful insights as you're working through this exercise. Uh, something that might be useful for you to look through is to use this uh, execution and visualization tool repeatedly until you get the right result. So going back to our slides, what I'd like to do is finish off by telling you that there is a textbook uh, chapter called Grover's Algorithm that has very useful tips that might help you in this process. So if you just simply look up Qiskit textbook Grover's Algorithm, you should be able to find this chapter which shows you a few things one of which is how to implement those oracle and diffusion operators using gates. In the lab, you're implementing them by using matrices and converting those matrices into Qiskit operators. However, when it comes to running them on real devices, you really need to think about how to implement these operators as gates. So you can see examples of how to do that for a few qubits in the Qiskit textbook, and we encourage you to look through that chapter.